أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أب القاسم محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين الغر الميامين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين السلام عليكم ما دي فيوز وكم تو إمام حسين تي في you are watching uh, us, inshallah, I shall be your host, uh, Ali Al Burji. And uh, with us, we have our esteemed guest, uh, Sayyid Ali Khalkhali, which we will be looking into the life of Imam Sahib Al Asri Wa Zaman, our 12th, 12th Imam, our Savior, our long awaited uh, Savior. And uh, we are very honored and uh, uh, proud to be able to present this program for all of us in order so we may learn and understand more the life and um, the essence of Imam al-Zaman al-Sharif. And the previous episode we looked into a brief introduction of uh, Imam al-Mahdi and inshallah in this episode we would like to look into the circumstances and the event of his birth and uh, would uh, like to uh, Pass the scale to you, Sayyidna, inshallah. Uh, with your permission, we can uh, begin. Um, we would like to explore and to understand more. Um, it is well known that Imam al Zaman was born on the 15th of Sha'ban in Samarra in uh, Iraq. Uh, we would like to understand, firstly, why was the Imam born in Samarra and not in another more traditional location such as Medina? like most of our Imams were born in Medina. And uh, inshallah, understand firstly the historical um, facts and events that occurred, what led to, as we know, Imam uh, Ali al-Hadi was uh, moved to, from uh, Medina to Samarra. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Dear viewers, my dear brother Ali, also I would like to send my greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as -salam Indeed, wa as you mentioned, regards to the 12th Imam being born, uh, his place of birth was Samarra. Of course, Samarra was a word, a city, uh, which comes from the word also that. Now we call it Surah Marra'a, that many people are happy and pleased to see uh, the Imam of their time, and pleased to see that city. But of course the word Samarra or the city of Samarra, the birthplace of the 12th Imam, is interesting. As you mentioned that other Imams or previous Imams were born either in the holy city of Medina or the uh, city of Mecca or elsewhere. Why was the Imam born in Medina? Well. You find in history it narrates that Imam al-Hadi was ordered or requested to move from the city of Medina and direct himself towards Iraq and in particular towards the place of Samarra which was an area of uh, an army place or we could call it barracks or oh, that's why a military uh, compound, military compound uh, a bit further on from Baghdad. Of course, the caliphates or the Abbasid caliphs, their capital had moved from uh, Medina or from where the previous caliphs were or the previous cities' capitals were towards Iraq and towards uh, Baghdad. And now you find that that military complex is where the Imams were asked to be. And in fact, they were under persecution and torture. Imam al-Hadi was tortured and persecuted when he was there in that city in Samarra. And even Imam al-Hadi was placed in house arrest. And this shows another indication of uh, their awareness of the greatness of the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt and their awareness from the Ahadith and the narrations that the 10th Imam was born 
11th Imam was born and the 12th Imam would be born uh, soon. So they tried their best to confine the Imam uh, in the city, the 11th Imam in the city of uh, Samarra. Of course, that's why the Imam has one of the titles of the 11th Imam, the father of the 12th Imam is Al Askari. Askari means again the military compound, the military from Askar. And you find that the 12th Imam was born even though there were many restrictions and limitations. And he was born in the holy city of Samarra. So uh, when uh, Imam uh, al Hadi was ordered to uh, migrate, and moved to Samarra, I understand, during the time of the Abbasid Caliphates, and it was the, uh, the Caliph of uh, Mutamwakil, so were they aware of the concept of the Mahdi? Were they, did they have knowledge of um, the promise that was given? Of course, as we know, every Prophet uh, had mentioned, not only about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, but also about the concept of the Mahdi, the one that would uh, bring justice to the entire world and get rid of all the injustice and cruelty and oppression. So were they aware from the narrations that were available about the 12th descendant of Rasulullah sallallahu uh, alayhi wa No doubt it was not just they that they were aware of the 12th Imam. But it was something that was very well understood. The awareness was there within the Muslims. From the time of the Holy Prophet وسلم, when the Imam <coughs> was mentioned, the name of the Imam was mentioned, and the Holy Prophet himself would say, al aimmatu min ba'di itni asha. The Imams after me are 12. And of course, the Holy Prophet would mention that these 12 are the same like Nuqaba Banu Israel, like the great caliphs, like the great princes, like the great chiefs of previous prophets of previous generations, you find that the prophets, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he would have twelve successors, and even when you go through the course in history, you find that the caliphs were aware. Uh, that now we are approaching the 12th. And let us try our best to prevent that 12th from being born. Let us try our best to prevent the one who the Holy Prophet would state that shall return justice and peace in the world after the world is filled with tyranny and injustice. Yes, that awareness was present. That's why you find that even uh, people would approach the Imam, the 11th Imam. Or they would approach the 10th Imam. Or they would approach the previous Imams. And they would ask about the Mahdi. And they would wish to prepare themselves. As we mentioned before that even Zurara, the companion, would come towards Imam al-Sadiq and Imam al-Sadiq would ask for a dua, would ask him to recite a dua during the time of the 12th Imam. Or they would come to the 10th Imam and the 11th Imam and they would ask, so who is the Imam after you? And when it would be the time of the 11th Imam, they would even ask him specifically that we know of this hadith. One who dies without knowing the Imam of their time dies a death of ignorance, jahili. So they would say, So, Yabna Rasulullah, O son of Al As, O son of Rasulullah, O Al Askari, O Imam Hassan Al Askari. Who is the Imam for us to follow after you? Narrations narrate that he would point towards a young son of his and say that he, my son, Mamat, Walam Ya'arifu, Matamitat al Jahili. 
one who dies without knowing him or without recognizing him during his imamat dies the death of ignorance and this also indicates that the imams were preparing the followers and the lovers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the imamat of the the 12th Imam, let alone those who are the oppressors and those who are the enemies who are aware of such. Ahsantum Sayyidina. Inshallah, uh, we'd like to take a, a short break. Uh, so, dear viewers, uh, we'll be right back after a few minutes. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. السلام عليك يا حجة الله في أرزاق السلام عليك يا أين الله في خلقه السلام Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, uh, beloved viewers. Uh, you have joined uh, me, Ali Burji, your host, and uh, our esteemed uh, and beloved guest, Sayyid Ali Khalkhali, discussing the life of 
uh, our beloved uh, 12th Imam, Imam of our time, our saviour, our long-awaited saviour. Um, this episode we're discussing the birth of Imam Zaman and uh, we started by and getting a, a brief understanding uh, as to why Imam Ali al-Hadi, our 10th Imam, uh, was transferred from Medina to Samarra, which Samarra was the stronghold or the capital of the then Caliphate, of the Abbasid Caliphate of uh, Mutawakkil. Uh, may Allah remove his mercy from the enemies of Ahlul Bayt and the enemies of Allah simultaneously. So we understand that uh, during the time of our holy 10th Imam, Imam Al-Hadi, and then our 11th Imam, Imam Hassan Al-Askari, uh, they were forced into house arrest, into confinement, because as well the Caliphate and the enemies of Allah and Ahlul Bayt were aware of the concept of the Mahdi and were aware that they were coming close to the 12th Prince of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa So they were all watching so I can understand how frustrating and how difficult must have been for Ahlul Bayt during those days where they knew that there were spies surrounding the house they couldn't really trust a lot of people and uh, how they had to be very careful and how now we're going to inshallah move into discussing obviously the, the mother of our holy imam and the uh, um, duration of the pregnancy and how inshallah we'll look into the similarities of uh, uh, prophets uh, Ibrahim and Musa alayhum salam with Imam al-Zaman. Bismillah said. Ahsantum, so as the Abbasid caliphs, and in particular the Abbasid caliph at that time, Mu'tamid. He had awareness of the 12th Imam being the one who destroyed all the false governments. The 12th Imam being the one who bring back happiness and joy and peace and true justice in the world. So he tried his best to prevent him from being born. Uh, a, f a footstep of Fir'aun and Nimrud, where they were trying their best to prevent a prophet of God from being born. Prophet Musa or Prophet Ibrahim from being born. And we know the many steps that they tried. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرُوا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَكَرِينَ And they plan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest of planners. Alhamdulillah. And so you find that in the night of the 15th of Sha'ban, 255 after Hijrah. A very special night. In fact, the holiest night after Laylatul Qadr is this night. It's a truly special night. Many Mu'mineen, Muslims throughout the world, we are recommended to engage in worship and ibad in this night. To engage in a'mal, many du'as specific for this night. And to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for hajat. You find that on the night of the 15th of Sha'aban, 255 after Hijrah, the aunt, Janaba Hakima, we'll say the Hakima, she would be leaving and Imam al-Askari would ask her to remain the night. For this night is a holy night, a special night. And that this night there would be a blessed news of a newborn. And to show how secret it was during the pregnancy. Well, this of was the surprise that she had. Sayyid Hakim would ask a newborn. He said, yes. He said, but there are no signs of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. No pregnant women in the house. No pregnant woman in the house. Mm -hmm. Or the lady, Sayyida Narjis, the wife of the, the noble wife 
of the eleventh Imam. She says, I, I don't recognize her being showing any signs or being aware of her being pregnant, all these moments that I've been here. Imam responded that in the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept her pregnancy concealed, in the same way of the previous prophets, as we mentioned, Prophet Musa alayhi salam. And itself in itself, this is a a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, proof, a sign of the miraculous nature of the birth, the miraculous events that took place, and a hujjah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you find that she stayed on that day, and she gave the blessed news of the newborn on that day. Would these verses being called out. وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقِّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوقًا Say, the truth has come and falsehood has vanished and certainly falsehood was bound to vanish. That the truth of the newborn, the Mahdi, has arrived. The 15th of Sha'aban, 255 after Hijrah. She was the one who would bear witness and should be there by her beloved, the lady, the noble lady, the mother of the Imam, the 12th Imam, and Imam al Askari was filled with joy and happiness on such a day. And this is a day for us to reflect on, the 15th of Sha'aban, a day for us to truly resemble, enjoy, and also remember that this was a miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sense that the proof and the hajj of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was born when they were trying themselves, the oppressors to prevent it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa makar wa makar Allah, Allah khayru al Alhamdulillah Rabbil Amin. May Allah hasten the reappearance of Imam al-Asr wa zaman And inshallah, Hassantum Sayyidina, thank you very much for uh, shedding some light into um, this uh, beautiful um, uh, incident in our history about uh, the birth of our Savior. And obviously this is a story that has uh, not ended. It's continuous uh, till present. And um, all of us, the lovers of Ahlul Bayt and all Muslims and every human being um, who believes in God or even in other religions, we can see the similarities, how everyone believes in this concept of a Mahdi, the concept of mm. uh, good uh, defeating evil overall and establishing that peace and tranquility in the world, which is really needed. And inshallah, uh, dear viewers, uh, as every episode, we dedicate the last uh, part of uh, the program into discussing one of the many responsibilities we have towards the Imam of our time. And inshallah today, um, Sayyidina, we would uh, discuss the responsibility of giving the Imam, uh, if, if not all or some priority in our lives. Why some? Very the good. Imam should be priority in our lives. The Imam, and this is a responsibility we would like to remind ourselves on, my beloved. Brother Ali, is that this is a reflection itself. Some of us don't even remember the Imam, don't even think about the Imam. And if we do, we think of him as second to my important tasks and duties, second to my priorities. But we need to re re rethink. The Imam should be priority in everything in my life. When I recite dua, my first dua should be dua, remembering the Imam of my time. Every act I perform in my life, I should think and put this in my mind. Does this please the Imam of my time? As pleasing the Imam of my time, I know it pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll perform it. Does it displease the Imam of my time? 
if it displeases him, I should avoid it. Keep the Imam as a priority in every single act in our lives. And you find that the previous Imams would mention about companions who were so great. Why? Because they prioritized the Imam of their time and their life. Let me give an example. We have a hadith from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam whereby Imam al-Sadiq he highlights the grand position of a companion of Rasulullah and a companion of Amir al-Mu'min. Who was that companion? Salman. Salman al-Muhammadi who was from Persia. And he was given that title, Al-Muhammadi. And then, Imam al-Sariq says that Salman had some great noble attributes that highlights his great position, Salman as a companion, and highlights the very fact that Imam al-Sariq is mentioning him and praising him. He says, ثلاث خصان. What were they? إثاره هوا أمير المؤمنين على هوا نفسه. He used to be altruistic and think about Imam Amir al-Mu'min Ali ibn Abi Talib more than he thinks about his own self. Meaning that the first priority he had in his life, in his day-to-day -day life, is that he would think about Imam Ali before he thinks about himself. He would think, does this please Imam Ali? Let me perform it. Even if it means that is something that I have to sacrifice for my own self. But I know it's our love for Mawla Amir al-Mu'mineen. Wa hubbuhu lil fuqara. And secondly, he had love towards the poor and he would sit with the poor and he would take care of the poor, he would give charity. وَثَالِثُهُ حُبُّهُ لِلْعِلْمِ وَالْعُلَمَاءِ And thirdly, his love towards the ilm and towards the towards knowledge and towards the scholars. So Imam al-Sadiq says that the greatness of Salman was seen by, his, by him prioritizing the Imam above himself. Let me see in my life today, if I want to be a true Mahdawi, a true follower of the Imam of the time, Imam al-Mahdi, Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Fawajal Sharif, do I prioritize him in my life before anything else? And this is a self-reflection for me and for us all, inshallah, and a responsibility and duty for us to remind ourselves. Prioritize him in every action, in every thought, in every moment in our lives. Ahsantum Sayyidina, well said. Uh, indeed, inshallah, may uh, we always keep uh, in mind and reflect upon our actions and our thoughts and always use um, Imam al-Zaman as at the end of the day he is the mediator between us and Allah Azza wa Jal and uh, inshallah we should keep strong, strongly, uh, strongly uh, hold of this rope that's hanging from the heavens as the whole Quran and as we refer to uh, Ahlul Bayt -salam, and our Imams the living and walking Qur'ans inshallah and with this, we'd like to close for today's episode. We'd like to thank you um, for being with us and uh, sharing uh, your knowledge and wisdom. And I uh, would like also to uh, thank Imam Hussein TV for providing us the platform to be able to sit here and uh, share the knowledge uh, of uh, the existence of Imam Zaman. And with this, we'd like to thank you, our dear viewers, for being with us. And inshallah, we truly hope on behalf of Imam Hussein TV that uh, you have benefited and continue to benefit from uh, uh, these programs uh, as much as we do. And uh, hopefully to see you uh, with us in the next episode, which we will uh, be discussing the Imamat of Imam Zaman in the uh, early uh, years of uh, his life. And uh, with that, we'd like to thank you very much and uh, wish you all well. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بیا تا جوانم در رخ نشانم که 
این زندگانی وفایی ندارم که این زندگانی وفایی ندارم یا